Speaker Kevin McCarthy spoke on the subject. He falsely equated former President Trump's actions after the 2020 election with the losing campaigns of Hillary Clinton and Al Gore. Take a look. And I can say the same thing that Hillary Clinton says about her election that she lost. I can say the same thing about the DNC who said it about um, the 2016 race. I can say the same thing about those in the Democratic Party from the leadership on down about George Bush not winning, that Al Gore did. But were any of them prosecuted? Were any of them put in jail? When Hillary Clinton said it, nothing happened to her. Well, when they said it in Georgia's election, nothing I happened to them either. You them. know what? When the DNC said it, nothing happened to them either. Speaker McCarthy, just a short time ago, here with me, CNN political commentators Van Jones, Alyssa Farr Griffin, Adam Kinzinger, and David Urban, also legal analyst Ellie Honig, Karen Friedman Agnifilo. Uh, Congressman Kinzinger, what do you oh think of Oh my gosh, uh, I just, I can't, <laughs> watching that, I can't do it. I mean, he's, he knows, he knows better. He, he knows that's complete garbage. And those are all just that's red meat talking points thrown to. Yeah, and it's and it, it, even even to the base would look at that and go, that's not the same thing. It doesn't make an ounce of sense. And you can see how angry he's been getting lately, by the way, when he speaks, Kevin. And it's very rare for him to get angry when he speaks, but he's been doing it more and more. And my guess is this is tearing him up inside. He's mad, not at the people who are asking the question. He's frankly mad that he has to come up with that lie and stand there and say that. And I think Marco Rubio tweeted even yesterday because some actors did a video where they were asking the electors in 2016 to vote you know, for uh, Hillary Clinton instead of Donald Trump. And he's, they was equating that. That's very different. It's okay to ask electors to switch their votes. It's not okay to create fake electors and attack the Capitol to get your way. It's, you're not even convinced Kevin McCarthy believes it no, watching that. I mean, it, and we saw this kind of echoed similar talking points. Elise Stefanik put out a strongly worded statement. They're using all the same terminology we'd expect. Witch hunt. This is to distract from Hunter Biden. This has absolutely nothing to do with Hunter Biden. They were all there in the Capitol. I'm old enough to remember when Kevin McCarthy said, and we have audio of if him saying, I am done with this guy talking about Donald Trump. He bears responsibility for this day. But now that's just out the window. I mean, I don't know how Republican support Supporters of someone like McCarthy see those two things and kind of like put them together because it's just a direct contradiction and it's so shallow. And yet, David Urban, I mean, this is repeated time and time again. Yeah, so the RNC, I mean, I, I know Congressman Kinzinger's losing his mind over here, but I, am. I, I think this, you know, a lot of this is, you know, I was going to say, to, to the average American, you know, distinction without difference. And, and these in these previous videos, if you watch the Martin Sheen video, that kind of the hundred celebrities kind of plea to the, you know, having faithless electors, electoral college, or if you watch the, the RNC has a video out, which I saw on social media, about a half hour of, you know, from 2016 on, you know, that period of saying, you know, Trump is not a legitimate president. We need to resist, you know, all the resistance movement and, and, and all those things. And and, you know, contesting his presidency from the, from the outset, you know, the articles in the Washington Post saying Trump needs to be impeached today, right? And on and on and on. That's what's going to be fed. I'm not saying it's correct. I'm saying that's what's being fed to Americans. And, and this, I know that the, our legal experts, you know, think this is a well-crafted legal document. I'm sure it is. But to most Americans, it's white noise. But right? I, I just white disagree noise. that the uh, most Americans don't remember that the Capitol was no, no, stormed and yeah, that but, false electors no, no, I, were I, put listen, up. Uh, listen, I, listen I don't agree. Yeah. The January 6th part, I don't disagree with. Right? But I think but there's a disconnect here. This is not a January 6th indictment, if you read it. This is a this is about a fake elector scheme. This isn't about storming is, the Capitol. Here's the problem is, it no, is both. Not really. Like, no, it isn't. It's not what's charged. And the conduct is the issue, not just the speech. It's the fact that they tried to overturn. They're going to throw garbage Kinziger, Congressman Kinziger said he'd like to see a subsequent indictment on that. They're gonna, I would. They're going to throw tons of garbage out there. The point isn't that it's not going to confuse people. It is. That's the whole That's strategy. The, and, and the problem is, hold on, let me finish. The problem is leaders like Kevin McCarthy <coughs> have to be the ones to go out people and show the difference and tell the truth. We are letting leaders off the hook because we're like, oh, well, you know, it's a, like, no, don't be in leadership if you're unwilling to say the hard truth to people. In terms of the legal battle ahead... Obviously, uh, the judge would like a speedy trial. The government would like a speedy trial. Uh, the judge was also uh, used to be a defense lawyer, so looks after the rights of the defendants as well. How speedy a trial can there be, and exactly who decides that? 
So the judge said uh, you have uh, a week to tell me, uh, Mr. You know, prosecutor, how much time you think this trial will take, and then the defense has a week after that to tell them. And she's going to take that information and use that to build a trial date. Now, I know one of the defense attorneys, John Lauro, has been saying this trial could take nine months to a year. But let's think about it for a minute. The prosecution has the burden of proof. The prosecution is the whole show. They put the whole trial on. The defendant doesn't have to do a thing. They don't have to open. They don't have to cross-examine a witness. They don't even have to put on a defense mm. at all. So really, the question for a judge is, how much time, government, is your case gonna, going to take? And that's really the critical part. And then you ask the defense, what defense are you going to put on? It seems very any. likely they would put on the former president. Exactly. And, and are they, let's say Jack Smith says this is a six or eight week trial, which I think that's probably right around what he will say. What the, the um, defense attorney is going to say, so I have another six months worth of evidence that I'm going to put on. What is he going to put on? And so at a certain point, that argument, the judge will push back on that and say, let's be realistic. You don't have to commit to what, exactly what you're going to do. But if you were to put on a defense, how much time do you think it would be? And I think the judge can do a fairly educated guess of how much time this would take and how long it would be. Same thing with the pretrial motions. We all know, we could, Ellie and I could sit here right now and tell you what the pretrial motions would be. It's obvious what the arguments are going to be. You know, First Amendment, uh, free speech, uh, you know, advice of counsel is another one. I want a change of venue, you know, because I can't get a fair trial here. I want, judge, you're recused because you're biased and you said the thing about, you know, President aren't kings and you know he'll make so many different arguments uh, that that are just very obvious and the judge will give him enough time to make those arguments those you know you, you could do that in two months for example and the government could probably respond in another two months Jack Smith's going to give over all the discovery there's no reason this case can't go in January February and be done before the first vote is cast even even in uh, the judge's role at, at a trial is sort of like a ringmaster you're trying to wrangle aggressive, opinionated parties that have not just their own agendas, but competing agendas. And one of the challenges for a judge is how do you keep control of your trial? I've had judges who cannot control their courtroom and let defense lawyers, or maybe sometimes prosecutors, run roughshod, and it's a nightmare. I've had other judges who have been strict, strict but fair, and said, we're going to get this done in X amount of time. I'm going to give you one week. I'm going to give you two weeks. I'm going to give you two hours to give your closing argument, not eight hours. And so a lot is going to lie on the hands of Judge Chutkin. And by all indications, she is a firm, tough, in-control judge. I've talked to people who've appeared in front of her. You can see it in her ruling. She is a no-nonsense, no-BS judge. And so I think she's going to... And she knows we're all watching. And so I look for her to push the pace here. Man. You know, I, I'm I'm still reflecting on the the, the my colleagues here and, 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 the, and, the, and the passion over, over there. And this is going to require, to, for us to get through this next 18 months, is going to require us doing something that we're just not that good at as a country, which is nuance. It is, in fact, true. There were progressives working to delegitimize Trump from the very beginning. It is true. And they were not prosecuted. That is true. And there were conservatives working to delegitimize de Obama from the beginning, including Donald Trump, who said he didn't have a birth certificate. And they weren't prosecuted either. It turns out there's a lot of speech that's not prosecuted. But what you won't be able to show is a Democratic president sitting in the Oval Office trying to hold on to power in the way that Donald Trump did, or frankly, a Republican president, or frankly, any president in the history of the country. And that's the truth. And so the problem is, to your point, um, Adam, there's going to be a lot of stuff thrown out there to your, uh, online, on social media, et cetera. And we're going to have to sit here and look at it. Look, you know, two things can be true. Yes, a lot of horrible stuff was said about Donald Trump before he had a shot. Some of it turned out to be, frankly, quite correct. Also, a lot of horrible stuff is being said about Joe Biden right now. Nobody's going to jail for it. There is one person being charged in this country, and it's the one person who's done something that no president has ever done, and it's Donald Trump. Yeah, Anders, a quick question to the lawyers here. So how much discovery is too much discovery, right? Because that's what I hear from the Trump folks, right? Is like, this is great for us. Now we get to open the Pandora's box of election fraud and America will see what, we, what we've been saying the whole time, right? That's what you've seen and you've heard. And, and I suspect that if the judge disallows extensive discovery, that the Republicans will say, aha, see, 
there it is. They're not allowing us to show America what's really going on. So discovery, how much is too much? Discovery is everything, right. to, to put it in one word. As a prosecutor, you have to turn over essentially everything you have to the defendant. But I think the question you're raising is a really good one. How much leeway will the judge give the defense in going, let's say the defense says, judge, we want to prove that the election was stolen in some of these seven states. Will the judge allow them to go down that road, which would vastly expand this trial? They, or, they could say, we want to go to each of these seven well, states. That's, 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 that's what I'm thinking. Right. I want to look at election exactly. Exactly. Philly, yeah. right? Like, yeah. And it's within the judge's purview to say, no, I find that's not a valid defense. I find you've not given me at least a nugget of information that I can work with. So big. Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.